Hi all, this is Skate. So we've done a Panther 8.8 .8 review, and now we are going to do a review on this VK4503, which is our new tier 7 German heavy tank, which is in the store at the moment. Now, if you haven't seen my Panther 8.8 .8 review, um, one, it's laggy as hell. I didn't record it in like 5-10 frames per second. That's literally how I played the game. It was awful. Thankfully, this footage is much, much, much better. My internet issue is fixed. So this video will be a little bit more interesting to watch as a result. And obviously, hopefully, it'll be just as informative as the 8.8 .8 review. So if you haven't seen it, I do recommend listening to it rather than watching it. But I do still recommend it. It gives my honest, straight thoughts on it. This tank, though, apart from this disappearing shot by there, is a much, much, much better tank than the Panther 8.8. .8. For starters, it carries exactly the same 8.8 .8 L71 gun. The difference between the two is very minimal, actually. It's effectively just shy of one less rate of fire a minute and a longer aiming time. But when you consider that it's dropped over one tier, so this is seeing tier 6, 7, and 8, rather than 7, 8, and 9, it actually makes this tank a bit better, in my opinion, or the gun a bit better on this tank. Add that to the fact that this has much, much better armour at a lower tier than the Panther 8.8. .8. Obviously you're sacrificing your mobility, but this genuinely is a much better tank. The only part this tank falls down in comparison to the 8.8 .8 is it doesn't earn as much. It doesn't earn anywhere near as much. But, that being said, it... You could say it will earn more in the long run, because you're more than likely going to get wins in this, or you'll find it easier to get wins in this than you will in the Panther 8.8. .8. I personally have done much, much better in this than I have in the 8.8 .8 as well. I've played over 20 games in this so far and have a 75% win rate. I don't have anywhere near that in the Panther 8.8. .8. And this tank can hold its own in tier 8 as well. Uh, basically, if you know how to side scrape, you'll do fine in this tank. If you don't know how to side scrape, you need to learn to side scrape anyway. Every German tank basically relies on side scraping. Whether it be the Lerva, the Tiger, the Tiger P, they all need to side scrape. So, in every situation you come across, you need to be trying to hide the front of your tank as much as you can, and you need to be side scraping. Either that, or you need to put your front at a very, very aggressive angle try to persuade them to shoot at the front. Obviously, while it's at an aggressive angle, once you get your bounce, you take your shot in return. And that is pretty much how I will constantly try and play this tank. Um, whether I'm facing tier 6 or 7, I will always try an angle slightly towards them to basically try and produce a bounce off the side. Now, the weakness with this tank is its turret. It has... A hell of a big turret ring actually, so regardless how this tank is angling, aim for the turret ring and you should pen. Obviously if you're driving this tank and you want people to avoid that, wiggle like mad. Don't ever just sit still side scraping, you need to be back and forth. The other thing is once you have shot is you need to be turning your turret slightly away from the tank ahead of you. And here I am going to die but it was completely worth it. Obviously, I'm happy to die. He was the last tank, and it was funny. So, so as shown there, you can ram in this thing. So, yeah, as you can see from that screen there, I do run camo, which obviously is another 2,000 off, but 26,000 net is not the greatest amount. Net, the most I have earned in this tank is 60,000, but I do run things like a camo net, or not camo net, camouflage, which is completely unnecessary on a heavy tank, but I just like the look of it. Okay, so get a bit more serious now, and I will have a look at some of the statistics. So as I've already mentioned, it does carry the same 8.8cm L71 gun, which you get on the Panther 8.8, .8, which is also the same gun you get on the Tiger and the Top Gun on the Tiger P. All three of these 
have 203 millimeters of AP pen, 237 APCR pen, 0.3 gun dispersion as well. So all the stats are exactly the same on all three of these tier 7 heavies. The differences lie in rate of fire and aim time. So on the VK4503, obviously this is without equipment, consumables, etc, etc. You've got 8 rounds a minute, Tiger 8.57 and Tiger P the worst at 7.7. That basically puts the VK4503 in between the Tiger and the Tiger P in regards to DPM. End game is there is absolutely no issue with the DPM of this tank. It compares to both absolutely fine. This tank excels in the aspect of it has a better aiming time than them both. It has 2.7 second aiming time in comparison to the 2.9 of the other two. Now on an armour front, it's not as clear or crystal clear as it appears on paper. Uh, Tiger and VK both have 100 on the front, 80 on the side of the VK in the rear and 82 on the Tiger. The Tiger P shows 200 on the front, 80 sides, 80 rear. That's not what it appears on paper. Uh, Tiger P, for example, 200 is only the main front plate. It is riddled with weak spots. The Tiger is virtually flat. I think the effective armor when you're pointing it head on on the lower plate is 114 due to the small angle. The VK4503, if you are staring at it straight on, the front hull armor is 137 on the upper plate, and on the lower plate, it's 147. In regards to the turret, the VK and the Tiger and the Tiger P, on paper, they all look the same. But the VK has the advantage of the shape of the turret in regards to the sides. You can angle the side much better on the VK4503, and you're more than likely going to get a bounce if you angle it right. The front of the VK turret, on the other hand, underneath the gun is a giant shot trap. It has a massive turret ring. If you shoot underneath the gun and the turret is facing you, you're more than likely going to penetrate. Uh, fun fact, this is actually the lower tier of the Tiger II, or in real life terms, it's the Porsche turret. So obviously designed by Porsche. Uh, this was actually swapped out in real life for the Henschel turret. Quite simply because it was a giant shot trap, and obviously would knacker up the turret ring as a result. So obviously this was changed for that reason on the Tiger II, but we're seeing this down at tier 7. All in all, it does come back to the you need to side scrape and you need to angle in this tank. As long as you do, it is more than capable. Now before we look at some more gameplay, I just want to show you the maneuverability of these three. So, in regards to turret traverse, VK wins by 2. In regards to tank traverse, the Tiger wins by 4 actually. Then the traverse of the VK is 28. And the Tiger P is really failing behind at 20. Also, you'll notice in regards to weight, the VK is by far the heaviest, and as a result, it is much better for ramming. And it's also, although it's heavier, much more mobile than the Tiger P. The Tiger, however, is much more mobile than the VK, but we do know that has recently been buffed. What this basically plays out as is if you put these three in a line, Tiger P is a long way behind. The Tiger will accelerate slightly quicker than the VK and will reach a higher top speed than the VK. This difference is very insignificant if you are playing close quarters. From my games, I would say this is just as capable as our recently buffed Tiger. In short, the Tiger just wins it in regards to being the better tank but the VK would beat that in terms of credit coefficiency. Which is obviously what this premium is all about. It's a premium tank at the end of the day. It's slightly worse than the Tiger, not by much. It's considerably better than the Tiger P, and it makes better credits than both of them. Again, another thing which I pointed out in the 8.8 .8 review is the Tiger, just like the Panther, has one of the worst average win rates of any tier 7 tank, actually. I think this is partly due to, due to the fact of it's the Tiger. People automatically go to the Tiger thinking, oh, it's going to be completely mad, it's going to be a monster. Go gun ho and die as a result. It's not. It's a tank which has a damn accurate gun, needs to be played at a bit longer range. As long as you're side scraping as well, you are more than likely going to get bounces. If you play it up close without angling, you are going to get penned every single time. 
which is exactly the same with this tank. So if you think you can hold your own in a Tiger, you'll hold your own in a VK, no problem at all, and you'll make more money doing so. Also, another note on the front of this tank is the... Oh, it's not obviously on right on the front, but another note in regards to this tank is with the mobility, you can more than capably deal with Dracula trying to circle you. I've done it several times myself, so I know it definitely works, not just the once, and it wasn't a bad Dracula driver. Uh, turret and track traverse combined, you will no problem at all spin round and catch the pesky bugger. Which is as good a reason as any to have a tier 7 heavy tank this mobile, and quite simply to deal with the hordes of Draculas at the moment. Anyway, in regards to this game, you will note it is a tier 8 game, and we have been flanked by a big chunk of tier 8s. You will also note that that Indian Panzer just bounced because of the angle of the tank. There is a T-32 up there as well. He didn't bounce. He got the side of my turret. So I am trying to back off round this corner so I'm not getting shot by them both, while still trying to get shots into these two. That shot there on a full chat LTTB is a prime example of this being a good gun. Uh, the aiming circle, although it's 2.7 seconds, once you've fitted your vents and you've got all your chocolates etc in the tank, it is a very, very quick, very accurate gun. Uh, this T-30 has seen me alone on lower health than him, oh, it's a T-32, sorry, and obviously comes to take advantage of that. He does get his shot in, that will be the only one he gets into me though. So obviously I have a quicker rate of fire, aim of the game there, keep him tracked, and now I want to try and bait him to shoot the front of my tank because I can't side scrape here. So pull back quickly, bounce off the front, and as I know he's already shot, I can very easily go back and track him again. Now at this point I also noticed that LTTB um, running rings around our IS-3 in the background, so being as he's there, might as well help him because the T-32 has backed off. So with all my equipment on this as well, you'll notice the reload is down to 6 seconds, which means obviously I can deal with that T-30. Oh, why do I keep saying T-30? LTTB, very, very quickly. And it means I can also come around here now, because we are winning, and get a shot into the top of this T-32 if he comes back just a little bit more. Come on, a little bit more. There we go. Obviously I'm not getting the kill on that one, but... I did plenty of damage to him, and being as I am tier 7 and he is tier 8, in theory means more XP and more credits. There is only an IS-3 left on the reds, and I do want to try and get some damage in before everybody else kills him. Now this is the downside of any heavy tank really, is getting to the last one to get some damage in. I do get some damage in. I won't get another shot and he'll die just before I reload. I did put my adrenaline on because I've already used it once, as a result it's free the next time. And I wanted to get some, well, more damage. So let's have a look at the results screen for that game. 61,000 net, 3,100 damage and only one kill. So although I'm low on the kill front, I did more than sufficient damage. I got myself a nice high caliper badge and obviously it's in a tier 8 game but only a second class. Now, that I think is part due to valiant effort, but also I think this tank is either played very well or very bad by anyone who plays it. So basically, I think the bar for this tank is already high, but you will still find the occasional, should we say numpty who doesn't side scrape, can't side scrape, never heard of the term side scrape, and as a result is easy to take out in a VK. So if you're buying a VK, which actually I personally would recommend, make sure you side scrape in it, or you will die, and you will die easily, and you will die quickly. Um, genuinely though, I do think this is a far better tank than the tank above it. In fact, I would rather go head to head, one on one, in one of these than anything else in a Panther 8.8. .8. In fact, put someone in a Tiger, well, put someone in a Panther 8.8, .8 and put me in one of these, and I will actually feel pretty confident going one-on-one -on -one against it. It doesn't have the maneuverability to get around this tank because this tank is still very maneuverable and as a result I actually think this is a better tank than the 8.8 .8. and tier for tier it's far better. Now this game is a tier 7 game so I am top tier and also 
it's very, very slow to start this game, but it is worth it, I think, because it gives perfect examples of this gun. Um, I obviously don't get that one, but you can still use this as a sniper or long range if you are cut off the wrong way. I mean, obviously, we're 300 meters here, and I am easily getting shots into that Tiger P. Just to confirm there, actually, I don't use heavy tanks as snipers. That's completely the wrong way to play a heavy tank. But you can use it at long range if you end up being in a situation where you are long range. Your shots will hit very reliably. It's it's a German gun, after all. But we are down one so far. Uh, we are down two so far, and the enemy team is winning. But you'll notice that myself... And the other three tier 7s are on the flank and about to get busy on the butt of this IS. Being as the other tier 7s are with me, I do make a point of trying to say attack that. You'll see the J Panther is calling everybody a noob. Um, actually hasn't called me one yet, funny enough. But for some reason, the Type 62 and the IS and the SU, according to him, are noobs. But I was with them and I wasn't called one. I feel a bit left out, actually. Anyway, there's the IS dealt with, and now we have a full health KB-13 coming to play with us. You will also see our Type 62 is now asking for help, but if you look at the mini-map, he has gone far too far ahead, and he's completely cut off, and we have no way of helping him without going headfirst and dying ourselves. So, sadly, he's either going to die or he's got to get away quickly. My priority is this KV-13, but then I also notice the M4A3E8 over there as well. So it's time for some side scraping. You'll see I'm not using a very aggressive angle here on the side scrape because I wanted to get out quickly to get that M4 over there. And obviously I don't think unless he was using APCI he'd have the pen to address me. You will also note by now that we are now 5 against 2. Obviously my aim of the game is to make it 5 against 4 as quickly as I can and take this guy out. I took a hell of a bit of damage there though and I honestly don't know where from. So into cover I get and I'm going to stay here for a second on the hope that I drop off. So I won't just run straight out because they'd expect it. Now I've sat there for a little second, it's time to drop off the map and go deal with a one-on-one -on -one with the T-43. You will also notice my light bulb on the screen, so hanging around behind that rock for just a couple of seconds did allow me to drop off their sights. Now I am going to try and face hug this T-43 to try and stop him getting to my soft squishy sides. And obviously by the time he gets away it is going to be too late for him and he is dead. But you'll also notice the IS has taken out another two tanks, so we are now in a two-on-two -two situation. The friendly IS is also on full health, so obviously we can be quite confident and pushy on this one, and I hope he does push up quickly. I know where the J-Panther is, I don't know where the M4 is, but I know where he was last, and that was just down this ridge here. So I'm going back to see if he's there, and he is Camp Bush. So... Again, another bounce because of this side scraping. It really does work well in this tank, and being as he's gone back, I can quickly and cheekily poke out and get myself another kill. So it's three for me, three for the IS, and now it's a big race to get the last kill. And he shoots and leaves him on one. So <laughs> I'm not going to complain. It's a cheap kill, but it's also a cheap shot because I used my HE. And obviously, th four kills for me and three for the IS there. Um, the last kill really was on the fence though, but the damage goes to me. I have myself a steel wall, 3,400 damage, and again, 60,000 net profits. All in all, do I think this is a good tank? Hell yes, it's a great tank. I, I would really recommend getting this tank. It's glorious fun. It's expensive, and it doesn't make as much credits as a Panther 8.8, .8, but obviously Panther 8.8 .8 is a tier 8 tank. So per match, the 8.8 .8 has the ability to make more money. This, I think, in the long run will make you more because you should, in theory, be able to do more damage and get more kills because it's a better tank. And after the 8.8, .8, I went into this with low hopes. However, I can say I am very pleased with it. And yeah, it's worth getting. I hope you have enjoyed this review. It's actually a lot longer than I planned on it being. Um, obviously any questions fire away in the comments and I will reply as quick as I can. Uh, thanks for watching and bye bye.